um, who is present. Uh, Claire, I see you online and everybody is there. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not there with you, but I'm here with you. Um, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> start with roll. Uh, Mike Cruz is here. Sandra Labarsky. Here. Anthony Garcia. Claire Johnson. I'm here. Matt McGrath. Here. Chris Farrell. Here. Tina Zecker. Here. Great. Thank you, everyone. Uh, for upcoming events, our normal reminder to check Flagstaff 365 for um, what's going on in the community. Uh, it's nice weather. Things are going to start ramping up. Um, public participation. Jenna, did you hear of any? Moving forward to the approval of minutes, <clears throat> did folks get an opportunity to look at the April minutes and are there any conversations about them before we move to uh, approve? My conversation is a question about, and I sent this to Craig and Janet replied, a question about whether or not if a vote isn't unanimous, if the minutes should reflect who voted how. And I, I already sent this, you know, reply out, but I'll say it for the large group. You know, we conducted voice votes versus roll call. That came out of the advisory role of BPAP, meaning that you, you know, recommend the city council and you recommend the city manager when it's under 50,000, but each of those parties has the right to overrule the recommendation. Um, although that is a very rare thing that happens um, and uh, so that's where it comes out of. That being said, we can go to a roll call vote and capture who voted yay or nay for every single vote. Um, and that's, you know, it's just going to be a matter of chair crews of calling on each person so that it's reported. Um, we went back and listened to the 3-3 three, three, and we couldn't distinguish the voices. We could count the number, but we couldn't distinguish the voices that we voted. So we would have to go to a roll call vote for every vote if we wanted to do that. But like I said, it's not a it's not an approving body, so that's why that requirement has never been there for a roll call vote. I think even in an advisory body, I think it's good to know uh, who voted how. And you don't have to do a roll call vote on any vote. You can ask for unanimous consent. And if you get it, that solves 90% of our issues. And on the rare occasion you don't, then you do the roll call. You don't know if it's unanimous until the vote's taken. You ask for unanimous consent, which means you ask for an objection. If you don't see any, it's passed. And that would still do a change in procedure of how you can call your voice, voice votes. I absolutely love this conversation and I think it's an important one. I just don't know that it's appropriate at this particular point in time. Can we bring it up at the end of the meeting and then have a discussion about whether or not we want to do this? And at this point, just move forward with the minutes for last month. I'm OK with that. Thank you, Chris. I, I do want to discuss it. I think it's important. I just don't think it's appropriate at this second. So thank you for um, for just moving forward with this particular agenda item and, and we can discuss it in a future agenda at the end of the meeting. So for the minutes um, of last month, can I get a motion to approve them as submitted if there are no comments or corrections or discussion? One comment, and that was these were complicated minutes, and I was great and grateful to you for capturing all of that. I I do a draft, and then Jenna will clean them up. So it's, it's a secret. <laughs> but it, it was with the video only. That was that was challenging. So I will not miss another one. Or <laughs> we'll have somebody. Yeah, I was I was very impressed with Craig's first take, given that he wasn't there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve the April minutes as submitted. All in favor say aye. 
Aye. Anyone opposed? Opposed. Anyone abstain? I abstained because I wasn't here. Thank you. I believe the motion carries. Moving forward to announcements. Um, I just want to note that uh, Commissioner Garcia has come into the room. Yes, welcome. Staff announcements. <clears throat> So we will start with um, just the highlighting that we're going to bring the Orange Tree Overpass uh, to a work session uh, at City Council, and that date will be June 13th. Um, we won't be approving any vested amount for that. It's not, um, yeah, it's not an approval, but it is it's the first chance that City Council will have to see the recommendations uh, of December. Um, they got a little preview in one of the council retreats, and there was a very positive response. Um, so I'm anticipating or hopeful of a of a, a warm night um, <laughs> in in greeting the uh, response. But if any of you care to be there, I just wanted to highlight it to you so that it can be a um, It's council. I know where we even are mm -hmm. on the agenda. Yeah, that is set about two weeks out uh, you know, prior, so we don't know. Okay. <laughs> it's it starts at three o'clock. So <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then my next announcement uh, is just. Hey, I'm gonna you know, show some more pictures of the Coconino Stroll. The art fence is installed. Um, and so, yay. All right, so here we go. Uh, just, I, I didn't take every panel. As you know, there's 28 panels, but here's kind of from the left where our luggage starts rolling down. Um, the, first, the first ones weren't in. And then we get to the three sisters, you know, the corn, the beans, and the squash, and our little rabbit still carrying luggage, um, <laughs> you know. And then we get the hiker, and uh, you know, then we get the uh, the Basque sheep, and they found one of the handballs, you know, you can see that there. Um, and you know, so here I'm kind of going randomly. Do you like the shot of the kayaker on the water? I just want a, a little bit of the shot, okay. <laughs> Spider Woman is feeding her. And I think you probably, if anybody's tied into any social media with NAU, the NAU president's already been out there. He was flying out. Uh, Heidi Hansen showed him this image on the right uh, at an alumni meeting. And then he took a whole video and put it on Instagram. So we are already media stars. <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of uh, NAU folks have already been out taking pictures, like, you know, with their hands holding on to the lumberjack axe. It's, it's going to, you know, so it's going to be a thing. And I think all of you remember all the discussion around the lumberjack that, that came, came <laughs> out of this project early on. So lots of fun. Um, you know, here's just some, you know, just little pieces. We've got 66 with our first squirrel and on the first uh, black astronaut carrying the Navajo flag, uh, uh, you know, grandfather lizard, uh, sorry, I'm saying that wrong, uh, for the Navajo, and then the first black uh, air stewardess, uh, and then, you know, some of the space pieces, I mean, how the glass came out in them. Um, sorry, you can see my reflection in Mars. <laughs> 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 um, and then, you know, some of the more, you know, uh, humorous pieces with Crazy Cat. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's just a, an incredible fence. Um, here's some of the more landscape pieces, some of that crater, um, the peaks with Abalone Mountain and the cloud houses. Um, and then the green book with black one was left making their way to Flagstaff, and then the Grand Canyon that's uh, Fred Bootley's in the pottery with the membranes 
uh, using the, um, what is that word? It was Thank you. <laughs> See, when you look at me now, it's the king to me. <laughs> and so, obviously, there's 28 panels, there's things I left out, but uh, so now we just have to finish the medallions. And while the artist was there, we had a big confab on site, and we are going to extract the other. Uh, the smaller ones that didn't really get set very well um, without tearing up the whole sidewalk. They're just going to be poured out. And adjacent to the sidewalk, closer to the fence, we're going to make separate slabs for the new 21 inch um, medallions. They are basically, they're 90% done. All they need to do is be patina and then have the security bolts put on the back. But we are working with procurement to. Uh, we have a subcontractor who's more of a concrete specialist who will be doing this work. And then between those, we're actually going to also up to six inches back of the fence, we're going to put some uh, de um, degraded granite, you know, um, in between. So it should frame the whole piece nicely, keep the grass from growing up to the fence, and then uh, frame the medallions. A little bit better. So we have a plan. How long it will take to execute it is unknown. Maybe by the end of June, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> but we're working on it. So it was really, it was a very good one. So. It looks beautiful. Right next, um, the downtown mile. Uh, putting together the little suffix group and thanks to Vice Chairman Lars and Commissioner Farrell for agreeing to be part of it. We maybe have a way to add some aesthetic enhancements to the rail bridge and the ADOT point walls. We're still, the reason we haven't gone forward with the um, meeting yet is because we're still trying to get permission for the ADOT point walls because that's going to be in there. Component. It would be the landscape architect on the team that the city's already put together, not an artist, but um, she does have some uh, background in doing this kind of work in Tucson. So it shouldn't be plain. Let's put it that way. And um, I use the focus group, and I've always used the focus groups, you know, to kind of inform about what the community holds dear and how they see the area and those sorts of things. So I just wanted to announce that. You know, it looks like we will maybe have some impact there. Um, and uh, yes, it's Laura, and I can never pronounce her name. Uh, it, it's with Wheat Group, and she's the same landscape architect who's working with the artist on Montreal. So, no, we, we had interaction. So, so the next staff announcement uh, is. That we're going to have beautification arts and sciences and have a table at Artex on Saturday, May 7th, May 27th, excuse me, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We invite all of the commissioners to come and visit. Uh, we're going to have uh, lots of informational flyers on current and past projects. We're going to have EIA grants, Evergreen, um, all to call for entries. We're going to have posters and stickers of the medallions. So you can come for that and <laughs> stickers of a couple of the past um, traffic cabinets. And so we're going to have a lot of um, collateral material takeaway. And we hope you can come. If you want to stay for a shift, we invite you to come and stay with <laughs> us and help welcome the public and give out flyers and stickers and talk to people about the party. May 27th. It's the Saturday of Memorial Weekend. Yeah. And I know some from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Remember, Art X in general is um, Memorial Weekend that Friday, Saturday, and Friday and Saturday. It's just two days. And then that Thursday night, you should have all received an invitation to the talk, the keynote speaker. Um, so I hope as many of you can attend that or as many events uh, as you can. 
Hey, Jenna, we don't, we don't have any uh, BPAC name tags or anything, do we, if we ever do tabling or, or community things like this? No. That's a really good idea. That is a really good idea. Oh, we do. <laughs> I like that, Chris. But I, I need to find my employee. <laughs> it, it might not. Yeah. So. Uh, Great question. Do you have a sign-up sheet or a four, four different shifts or times that maybe you have fewer people helping? I can send one out. Yeah, whoever wants to respond, and then I'll compile them and send it to the group. You know who's going to be there. And but there are lots of different events taking place that weekend. Um, yes. So so go around and, and absorb as many of them as you can. If anybody wants on Friday, if they have time in the middle of the day, it's a work, it's a work project. I'm going to see the ferret rock opera at the Atticus. <laughs> Pop goes the ferret. It's a ferret. That's the, it's on my list on Friday. So please go to art. You know, I know you guys have the website. There's lots of events now posted. You, if you can just go to one thing, so it'll be, you know, got a feel that we all get a feel of how you know your pilot project went. You know, you can tell a lot of stories. And then last, um, I think uh, Craig is going to bring up, I noticed from the Viola Awards, I know that the um, Commissioner Garcia told us a bit about them, but I just kind of wanted to you know, highlight some of our connections. First of all, one of our BIA grantees won an award, Excellence in Collaboration. Um, we have some other connections. Um, Planet Cree, the emerging artist, she applied for one of our traffic signal cabinets. Um, and then I thread it together, you know, who has a community impact organization is doing a temporary project with Susan uh, for the library opening. And if you scroll up a, just a little bit, just a little bit, I think there was one more. Yeah, I just also, um, if you recall at our last retreat, we saw Sean Stevens and we had a tour of his exhibit and then his daughter was awarded the traffic signal cabinet at Western Dorca. So just wanted to put, you know, pull out some of those connections from the Viola. <laughs> Thank you, Jana. Um, any commissioner's announcements? I have an announcement that most of you already know that next month will be my last uh, BPAC meeting. So thank you all for the last two years. But uh, I'm just, as I mentioned to others, I'm working on my PhD and it's getting to crunch time. And between that and work, I need to be cognizant and careful with my time. So. <clears throat> We will have a formal thank you in June, but I do just want to say that um, Commissioner Zikers has brought a, a wonderful connection with NAU that um, as a program manager, I have really valued. We're still working on getting more NAU students involved, and she's promised that she's going to continue that line of work, <laughs> and I'm just going to be holding her to that. <laughs> um, and so, I really have valued the service and I thank you so much. We will we'll have a more formal so everybody can tell the you know good stories about you in the next uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you leave early. <laughs> thank you, Tina. Any other commissioners have announcements? Sure, just a, a less significant <laughs> schedule announcement. Uh, I have a public meeting downstairs at 5.30 today, so I may excuse myself if we do action items a few minutes early. Okay, and I'll be doing the same. Okay. All right. So I have I have several announcements. Um, there, there might be some changes on BPAC um, as terms expire and we bring potentially more people on. And it's important for me that, that we have some sort of acknowledgement and closure just in case at some point some of us are not here. Um, I'd like us just all to be um, clear about the options or the um, 
the goings on. Sandra Labarsky and I um, have our terms expiring at the end of May. Um, I have reapplied. I don't believe Sandra has reapplied. Um, is that correct, Sandra? That is correct because it's a little complicated right now. <laughs> I was just waiting for guidance from Jana. <laughs> okay. No, I have not. Well, I, you're going to get some of it here, but we can talk more afterwards. Go ahead. So um, we both have agreed, however, to stay on until the vacancies are filled for our two positions. There are currently four applicants um, for our two positions and for um, Tina's position. There might be one or two more applications coming in. I have reapplied, um, but you know, as, as everybody knows, council, uh, they're the folks who appoint people. Um, and so that remains to be seen uh, in terms of who gets on BPAC. Appointments will occur at the June 6th um, council meeting. If people are interested, um, Tina's replacement will be appointed for one year. The others should be three year terms. Um, as Jenna mentioned previously, there will be uh, uh, an appreciation at our next, at our June BPAC meeting. Uh, new commissioners will be invited to attend, but they won't uh, officially be seated until our July meeting. Um, so that's all BPAC business. I, I do want to announce that the Flagstaff Symphony Orchestra has our golf tournament on June 3rd at 930 at Continental. If anybody is a golfer, uh, please come out. If anybody wants to sponsor a golf cart, uh, we would welcome that. It's $150. If you want to sponsor one of the 18 holes, it's $250. And there's um, recognition, logo placement, advertising, all that stuff that goes along with that. Um, individuals can also uh, buy um, golf cart or a hole uh, and you get your name, your spouse's name, your kid's name, somebody you're honoring um, on the marketing material. So that's an option as well. Um, and then last on my list and most importantly, um, as some people already know, Craig's birthday is today. <laughs> so if I could, if I could just start off the happy birthday song. Yeah, I feel my voice sounds lovely on. coming through the speakers. But can we all sing happy birthday to Craig? As you know, he does it's such an amazing. It's on the agenda chair. <laughs> it's, it's one of my announcements, Craig. Um, so can we all please show him our appreciation for everything with a happy birthday song? Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Happy birthday to you. Happy 29th. Yes, I hope it's been a wonderful day, Craig. Sure, that's in the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That was that was touching. <laughs> Thank you. Chair, can I ask a, a clarification to um, to Councilwoman Miranda? Yes, yes. So, uh, in regard to these new appointees, uh -huh. uh, who is what council person that is responsible for this? Time? I don't know. I haven't. Is it on the agenda yet? I think it was just yeah. So it's randomly picked, and I won't know until I see it on the agenda. And I'll know as soon as you all see it as well. And I'm just wanting to know how we can make make sure that's a smooth um, appointment and avoid yeah. the bumps that we had last time. Right. There were some bumps, weren't there? We as council have kind of reminded each other the process. We've had an email sent out on the proper way to do uh, commission appointments. 
So hopefully that will help. And I can make sure that once I see it on the agenda that I reach out to the council person and just say, hey, if you have questions, please let me know. We want to make sure this is safe. Great. And I'm wondering, is it appropriate for, in the case of Chair Cruz, for the commission to make a recommendation? I think it's council specific. Like they have the opportunity to reach out to any community members they want to, yeah. to get information. Yeah. Right. Well, I appreciate your kind yeah. of keeping yeah, I'll, an eye on it. I will keep that. Yeah. Andrew, I for one would hope you would reapply. I oh, value both you. your insight and your understanding of the long term history. Thank you. Okay. I'm consulting because it's a little. <laughs> There are some complications based on the last, the last round. So I want to, you know, yeah, I guess <laughs> I just it's awkward, but thank you. Okay. Any, right. other, any other questions or comments in terms of announcements from commissioners? If not, we can move forward to the BIA grants. Kristen, you've got this? Yes. Okay, so today we have um, three applicants um, who are returning to provide updates on their BIA applications. And just a reminder to our grant applicants that you will have um, approximately four minutes to provide your update. Um, I will be I'm doing the PowerPoint as well, but um, you have, I don't foresee either of you going four minutes, but um, if you are approaching it at around the 30 second, you have left time, I'll put my hand up just so you know. Um, and then commissioners, you have up to four minutes to ask questions after each presentation. And of course, I will keep time, but we can grant extra time upon a vote. So our first um, presenter will be Margaret Morrison and she Kristen, is presenting. I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you please just clarify for us because I have forgotten. Are we uh, are we voting after each presentation or do you want us to wait until the end? We ask you to wait till the end. OK, thank you. Thank you for clarifying that, Jan. Um, and so Margaret is presenting um, her updates on 19 Westdale Avenue utility boxes. And um, from April, this project was provisionally approved. And today, Margaret is presenting final artwork as well as um, the budget. Thank you. All the complex issues that the city has to deal with, I can only say. This is a <laughs> so much fun. And I had a great we time. Agree. <laughs> so, um, so also let me um, just I want to thank the committee for selecting Beaver and Dale project as a grant recipient. Um, Jill Sands is the artwork that was selected, and I'm gonna say it's because it looks beautiful. And uh, with this particular downtown condo. Uh, it is a beautiful bill and the selected artwork enhances not only the corner, the building, but the entire city block. And the, the generous grant funding will allow um, two utility boxes to be wrapped with the artwork of artist Jewel Sands. And um, the background, as you can see, is a little bit muted with the Malpai rock, but I gotta tell you, the way that that wraps around, it is going to be it's just the continuity is just beautiful. So, um, yeah, and also was able to work with Jill on the, because there are like five boxes, um, but Jill and I will work together to make sure that the paint behind the boxes is in cohesion with the rest of it. I, I think we're so lucky that we actually had a wrap around the corner. The other thing, and I will be on in like 30 seconds, um, the other thing is that we wanted to make sure that the, the vinyl wrap, the artwork was not such a huge splash on the Beaver and Dale corner because people drive down Beaver pretty fast. So we were a little bit nervous about selecting artwork that might be too much of a splash. This one 
It's just one place. Mm -hmm. so. And also, you have that church in the same colors, right? We have the church in the same color, so the whole block should really have a really nice beach. So, thanks again for selecting us. And Margaret, do you just want to go through briefly your budget as well? Um, sure, I can do that on my area of expertise, but I did get it all on the piece of paper here. So um, the vinyl wrap, I'm working with Film Tech. Uh, the first wrap, which is the biggest one, is 1129 The second wrap is $702. And then, of course, the artist fee is $1,800. Uh, I did go through how much it's going to cost us for paint and the rollers and you know, all the paintbrushes that we need. The total expenses then come up to about $3,900, $3,919. We did come under the $4,500 uh, cap that we have for the grant, but I think we have everything that we need and I have a number of volunteers that are going to help me with any additional painting behind the actual lab. Pretty excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> you tell. I am yeah. so happy that mm -hmm. I just knew this. It was just fun. And um, yeah. So, do you have any questions for Margaret? I have a question. I know we talked a little bit last time about the selection process with the artwork. Can you just tell us what, what how you ultimately decided to go about that? Yes. I let's see. Jana and Kristen sent me about 32 different artists. Um, I asked a number of people in my demographic age, younger, older, and everybody had an opinion. <laughs> um, yes. And I thought the coolest one actually was my son and daughter-in-law who came down and said, you know, in Berkeley, we want a splash. <laughs> it's like, Great for Berkeley and in other parts of town that would be great. Um, so anyway, I asked a number of different demographics, also submitted to the HOA board, all of the options. They selected four, came back to me, and then I worked with the HOA board to come up with this one. So everyone is happy. I know Jill, she'll do a great job. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Does Jill have any other um, artwork pieces in town that are Public. Uh, we talked about it. She didn't say anything specific. Uh, I know she has an art studio downtown, so I'm going to meet up with her later, but um, later in the month. But um, not she puts her art in the studio, so you can go in there. Yeah, I love her. Work. She's pretty happy. Yeah. And what a great thing! You know, I thought about this while she and I were standing there talking. That. Um, for the artists in our town, I, we really wanted a local artist to be able to have that. I mean, it just for her, it's just going to be great. Pretty nice. How about your volunteers? Are you going to be bringing them from any organizations or just like your friends? Mostly friends cool. who are good painters. Okay. I don't know anybody who's sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> no sloppy painters on this lab. <laughs> nice work bringing this project. Thank you so much. Thank you, Margaret. Okay. And then next up, we have um, Joel Geist from Red Frog, Red Frog Designs. And um, if you remember, Joe, um, Joel, excuse me, was presenting on Cosmic Ray's Tunnel of Love, so um, a two-part mural that he was developing. And today, he's, he is presenting um, the final artwork. Yes, so I'm very excited that it no longer feels like a two part project, even though there will be this 300 feet in the middle of, of what <laughs> I've decided to. Those are sheep tracks, if you can't tell. So <laughs> our scene is now like, as you can tell, kind of uh, morphing into this herd of sheep that are running out of that painting in that part. Those are the major additions of the wraparounds. So those will fold into the tunnels uh, and then the tracks will continue down the 300 feet that's you know an easy stencil job and then that's the fold into the tunnel that then goes out to the triangle and yeah it finally feels like one cohesive piece the biggest additions other than the 
um, the wraps. Uh, yeah, you can see it's hard to maybe hard to tell, but I did Photoshop in and you can kind of see the, the sheep part would pull into the towel. Um, there's minor additions. If you look side by side fixes and things that I did, but uh, the biggest addition besides the wrap ins are some wording and um, it's sort of a hidden hidden column in there. In the sun, it says as day rolls to night and hills roll away. So rolls on. And I pitched that to the friends and family. I was like, I'd like to put his name in there, but covertly because he was someone who liked his anonymity, which is why he went by Cosmic Ray instead of his real name a lot of the time. And we're not using his exact likeness. It's just something that could be him. And again, in the poem, that could, if you knew that's his name, it's obviously his name. But if you don't, it's just a nice poetic addition. Um, that is that. The only other thing I have to show, if there's any question of confidence, this is the one I just finished at Physio Shop uh, this past week. And that was the Photoshop that I sent them before I did it. That was the real one. Where is it? This is at Physio Shop. Um, by uh, Bookman's, yeah, cool. Yeah. Can you go back to the the big things that were missing from, or that I was hearing from the last design was just the humorous and the uh, wanting something that wrapped in. Uh, well, that was the main thing I wanted. Yeah, I'll start talking. I think I. And I know Bryce, Bryce Chermobarski asked a question that we weren't able to answer last time about the uh, the hospital, and I did oh, right. an inquiry about you know the talking to um, Martin Hess. Um, exactly, it really isn't known. It could happen in a year, but it could be four years. It's one of those kind of projects that's. Is a lot that has to go into it before it moves forward. And um, so this will be, can be enjoyed for a time and then can be replaced. And we can afford to replace it if they, you know, they might destroy one end of a tunnel yeah. and, and then we have to reapply it. No, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'd be excited back if that's possible to uh, reinstall. Yeah. Yeah. I did just, I did want to say that. I think you're going to love this and not want to see it disappear. Yeah. yeah, I would certainly want to, you know, reinstate the same elements, but who knows, whatever happens. I think that was part of what I said last time. I'm I'm down for the evolving art. Did you say the, are there words in the sun, like in white? Yeah, it's in okay. white. Okay. And uh, the the first part. I see the part on the hills. I just didn't see the first part, but it's I can kind of see it in the sun. Point. Yeah, it's purposefully not overtly eye catching, especially at that scale. Yeah. Larger, you'd clearly be able to read it, but um, I want it to be at first glance. You may not even see that there's writing there. And it's mm -hmm. just this nice kind of hidden drawing in the background. Yeah, I think that's it. Just uh, just briefly, what was the sheep story again? Just really quick, so I can tell people when they answer. Um, well, it's it's Cosmic Rays Tunnel on Sheep Crossing Trail because this tunnel was used for sheep herders. Thanks. Thank um, you. I don't know the full. I appreciate it. That was enough. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony's takeaway: sheep herders. <laughs> I'm going to be presenting for Candace Ryan um, Schmidt, who um, you saw last time. She is um, working with Chip Thomas and Killjoy, and they will be um, mounting a wheat pasted mural entitled Celebrating African Americans in Flagstaff. And this will be located at um, 
I think it's 9 East Cottage Avenue in the alleyway there, and it will be um, on the south side. So in April, um, BPAC um, gave approval for this project with the contingency that initial grant funds were not to be dispersed until 100% of the crowd source funding was completed. So um, I'm here to present today a few updates that Candace had forwarded me regarding in particular what their GoFundMe plan campaign is and how they will be bringing awareness to the campaign um, in anticipation of raising these funds. Um, and we would like to ask BPAC today to reconsider the amend to amend the contingency to allow dispersal of the initial grant funds upon completion of 60% of crowdsource fundraising. So um, I've included um, a screenshot of uh, their GoFundMe campaign. It launched last week and already, at least this morning, $870 have been raised. And their proposed budget overall is $11,000, $11,000, 6,500 of which um, come from GoFundMe. And then BIA grants, uh, their request is for $4,500. And as we'll see there, that's a breakdown of how they will utilize those BIA funds. And working. Okay, off the top of my head. <laughs> so they have already launched their campaign. The campaign will go through mid August, and they have already been generating excitement for this campaign. Um, as I stated previously, $870 has been raised. Um, they have received confirmation from um, Flagstaff Climbing Gym and Northern Arizona Yoga Studio that those two businesses will be sending a direct email campaign to their members um, in support of this particular project. They will also be um, sending um, some digital collateral to Dr. Coral Evans and the Sunnyside Community Association, Southside Community Association, and the Murdoch Center. Ricardo Guthrie, um, the Lived Black Experience, um, and other Southside businesses. Um, Pizzi Cleta has also stated that they will donate to um, this particular wow. campaign as well. They will also be sending a press release to local media, including the Arizona Daily Sun. And um, they will also be um, bringing awareness to the campaign through uh, the artist Thank you. Social media platforms and um, Chip Thomas, one of the artists, has extensive experience in um, crowdfunding. Um, he did his many of his projects, especially those you see up on the Navajo Reservation, um, um, began with GoFundMe campaign. And their fundraising goals. So again, $6,500 in total. Um, they plan to raise 31% of this goal by June 30th. They plan to raise 62% uh, by July 31st, um, which would be right around the time that we would ask for these initial grant funds to be dispersed with 100% by uh, mid-August. And um, they are looking at a late summer start time for um, the, um, for to begin this project, but if the grant funds were allowed to be dispersed earlier, uh, this would allow them ample planning time um, to purchase materials and to prepare um, the site and in anticipation of this wheat pasting that is to come. And that is the updates for this particular project. Yeah, so we still you know, wanted to bring this back to have you reconsider for that contingency because we would love to see this project finish this fall. And we know that Chip Thomas also does extensive interviews as part of it. And so if we could get that going, um, then we think, we think if the campaign is, is, is rolling, you know, our funds getting the project started, there's things that they can 
post on the GoFundMe site, you know, uh, aspects of the project that are going. That helped do the um, you know, flight of song on the site of Orpheum. They had two different brands, ours and one from Creative Flagstaff. But then they, they painted a corner and they, and they outlined some and they got people more excited and it, it, it built more fundraising when it was starting to kind of ebb off. You know, sometimes you get the first push and then it kind of ebbs off. And, and, and so sometimes getting parts of it done that you can show, you know, helps, helps with the show. So um, we wanted to, you know, the, we want you to be comfortable. Um, obviously, we know that we very rarely had to ask for, you know, funds back, um, but we wanted to give the, them a chance to, you know, present their whole campaign uh, to you and ask you to reconsider. What happens if they don't make their goal? Um, what happens if they don't make their goal? We have to ask them for that kind of back. You know, and we don't give them 100% of money. I mean, we don't give the entire grant amount. Mm -hmm. anyway, so we wouldn't be giving them the entire $500. Has there been any discussion with them in time in line with that? Like, I mean, you're talking about 4000 is what they would have raised in order to get our funding. So they would have $9,500 about would do they see a possibility of being able to do part of it or modify it with the 9500 if they don't reach their goal. Yes, we have talked to them about that and um, it is possible. And I, I think what would happen is they do a part one and a part two. That was the discussion um, that they would, you know, maybe do it to a certain point and then try to finish the fundraising following. Okay, that allows them to get started sooner. So, do you need a motion to approve these? We need a motion to modify your contingency. Before we vote on all three, Jenna, whatever happened with uh, the discussion regarding the license and what we were going to do in terms of um, asking them to sign something where did that conversation end up that was more it did come up a little bit but it came up as a whole policy um, uh, discussion um it was more about the juice uh, but it, it was about both yeah uh, but it was a whole policy we're not changing the policy at this point but we did go back the other one and ask for a business license. They want to use the medical suggestion. We didn't ask for that. You know, if you want to reapply with a business license, etc., they'll make that decision if they want to reapply in the fall. Um, but as far as the policy, um, me doing the guidelines to change it as policy, um, um, that is something that is going to be discussed as far as being a new project. In, in the retreat in the fall, it was asked as a as a um, as a discussion item. It comes forward as a discussion item, and then if, if people want to change the guidelines, then it will be put in as a project um, that falls into that for prioritization. But if we wanted to with this project, we could ask you to negotiate with right, this right. one as right. a one. No, but this has already been approved, Chair Cruz. The contingency is just about when they get the funds. It's not provisional. So this has been approved without uh, a business license. Okay, and we're not gonna ask for one? No. Okay. So at this point, do we vote on all three, starting with the first one? Is that how we proceed? Yes. Can I just say, uh, express yes. my little discomfort on this? I, I mean, it doesn't sound like there's much prepping that they can do prior to the whole project. Just, like, it just seems uh, like a pretty unusual request. I think some of the, some of the prepping is chips interviews. Is getting cool. And who's he interviewing with? He's, so he's working with quite a few families. Um, 
Who's working with the Flemings? Mm -hmm. Family, Coral Evans's family. Oh, okay. And Jana's correct, and I failed to, to include that in, in the preparation, but not only just of the site preparation, but also um, making sure that those oral, oral histories are, are recorded um, and that um, photographs have been selected that they will utilize in anticipation of the card at this. And so what will happen? Well, just meeting with the families, um, finding out, you know, their particular experiences, um, their histories, cultural traditions, et cetera. Um, and then my understanding is um, you know, selecting images based on those meetings and those conversations and the conversations with family members. Okay, so the images that we're seeing, that's that's a mock-up, that's not correct. A, okay, correct. Mm -hmm. So he still has to do all the research. And he's been doing it, but but there's more to come. Okay. All right, then that, that's very helpful. Right? Do we know if any of they have donated, have, if any of them have donated to the GoFundMe campaign? Uh, they might have. Um, uh, Candace is um, out of town, but in my last conversation with her, um, she did not state that any of them had at that point, that they were still going to, that their outreach um, with those individuals and those organizations was forthcoming. Okay. Are we ready to vote? Starting with the first one, the utility box, folks? Yes. So is there a motion to um, approve the proposal based on the design that we saw tonight? So moved. Second. Thank you. Um, it's been moved to approve the Dell Avenue utility box uh, design that we just saw presented. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Thank you, the motion carries and the design is approved. Um, moving forward to Cosmic Race Tunnel of Love. Um, the final approval here. Is there a motion? Second. Thank you, it's been moved and seconded to approve uh, Cosmic Rays design for the Tunnel of Love. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Thank you, the motion carries. Moving forward to the Celebrating African Americans um, project. With this, we are um, voting on the contingency to allow dispersal of the initial grant funds upon completion of 60% of the crowdsource fundraising. I have a question on that. So um, you had said we would release the full. Right. What do we, yeah. we, we, we release the guidelines say we release 50% up to 90% on staff discretion. And uh, one quick question. Sorry. Uh, have they done or have they shown evidence of getting any money yet from the GoFundMe? Yeah. 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 Sorry, I, did, I missed that. All right, I motion to approve. I second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve the proposed the contingency of releasing 60% of the crowdsource. I'm sorry, grant funds once the crowdsource fundraising meets 60% of their goal. All in favor? We had two people second that. Who would you like to officially have a second on? <laughs> I just heard Claire. Thank you. Sure. So moving forward with a vote, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? I'm opposed. Anyone abstain? Thank you, the motion carries. Moving forward to the discussion items. Jana. Okay. 
You said you said it on Friday. You don't be with yourself. Oh yes, but then I, I, I attached it to your email to you. So find out emails for me and you'll find me a guest. So, we already have some new projects that have been granted discussion items and, you know, that have come up throughout the year. Um, you know, we are going to have a presentation on the market of dreams by Carl Evans hopefully in June. We hope to have that tonight. She, she had a schedule conflict to see what we may be able to do between the different kinds of uh, grant sources. We just kind of want to get an overall picture for her about what all the plans are for Market of Dreams and that might help us. Um, uh, Commissioner Garcia had brought up Ponda Rosa Park. Um, Pros has, I thought we were going to have that in June. It's most likely going to be August that the um, Pros Parks Department is going to come present on that. Um, there's some wastewater uh, issues that are kind of delaying the planning of that park, but that's a potential new project. Um, you know, we have uh, the Rio de Flag Rip Wrap update and how to approach that. We're going to have Jeremy DeGator from Capital Project present how best to keep our best in the conversation as that project goes forward. Um, I know um, Mr. DeGator was very uh, happy about Mr. Lebarski sending that email to the Army Corps, but we will, and that's, again, I think Rio, we know, is just going to periodically, you know, raise its head here and there like the downtown mile is, and it's just always going to be this constant new project. <laughs> it's one project, there'll be probably a dozen specific little projects. Um, we also may have another one that's coming up um, uh, about a mural that, that needs repair um, that isn't part of our collection, but is very much, it's in our public art map, very much valued, it's, it's been damaged. So it's the Ken Lane, um, the Absolute Bikes. Absolute Bike, the stucco, it's just cracks all through it. So we need a lot more information, but we know that, you know, projects, you know, ideas come up and then emergencies come up. Right, um, and so there's always it's always an ongoing conversation. I just do though as we move towards the retreat, the budget cycle is just ending, and then it's just beginning. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you know, it's like city, yeah. and city council and hasn't yet voted, but they but they will <laughs> very soon, right? <laughs> and um, but. In order to even start, get budget amounts, to get them into the cycle, to get them into all the reviews, you know, we have to have our prioritization at that October review back three. And in order for a project to really be fleshed out enough for us to really have a, a good prioritization conversation, you know, especially if it requires a lot of partners, a lot of things, staff needs a little time <laughs> to to, to get things prepped for that October retreat. So I just ask you, you know, I am going to ask you for a deadline to be, it doesn't mean a deadline for consideration entirely. It's a deadline to be considered for that October retreat. Um, so I would like you to submit any new ideas to staff by the July BPAC meeting. Okay. Um, you can even ask for it as a discussion item at the end of the July BPAC. In order for me to work on some kind of discussion for August or September, 
I really need it by that day. Um, you know, please try to identify required partners. You know, if it's something that ADOT has their hands in, if it's something that, yes, that we have, it's going to require another city department that you know of. You know, try to include that in your request. Um, you know, please try to identify the type of project you think it is. And does it have to happen in the next two years? You know, is that something that's going to, you know, um, be heavy in the prioritization? And then please try to identify how these impact goals. And you should have that for your last retreat. Um, also, things to consider um, that if you guys want 20 new project ideas in <laughs> this my meeting, um, it takes staff a lot of time. And then it would, you know, if you guys approve it as future agenda items, I'd be following that. And I'll have to put something aside in the current work. You know, I do ask that you consider that our FY24 and FY25 are already full projects that have seen high priority scoring in the last two years. That um, and projects with outside partners require much more coordination and could take the place of two projects. And I feel that way about the downtown connection project and the road tree. They require a lot of coordination. This, these are big city teams uh, that you, you get involved with. Whereas, um, you know, probably at Switzer Canyon Roundabout will have some complications, but we're not building a project along with it. And so it's a little bit simpler to do. So just, you know, the more partners, the more coordination. Um, and then just, again, uh, things to consider. If, you know, prioritize yourself a little bit. If you have five ideas, prioritize yourself and, and, and say, you know, which one really meets, you know, the program goals. Um, and uh, so I just asked you to consider those things. And I just, uh, we're, uh, we'll be ready this summer to start the next, <laughs> the next yeah. budget cycle. <laughs> That's all I have. Thank you, Jenna. Any questions or comments, folks? Overarching question. Yes. So I recently learned that FUSD is working to take down both Marshall School and Kinsey. And to what extent um, is FUS our FUSD plans integrated into the regional plan? And to what extent can that project, I mean, those are again big neighborhood events. Um, is it appropriate for us for VPAC to be engaged in that? I know when we talked about a big school project, we, we did run into a wall. And I, I don't remember all the ins and outs of it because it was, Eliza was kind of leading that. Um, that we didn't know how to fund it because uh, the intergovernmental there were there was issues about that and I can't speak to what they were specifically and maybe Ms. McIntyre remembers it all. Um, just so I already think of the recorder. We have a hard time if people you know, sit back there and talk and hear the recording after. So. So there is a an IGA an IGA between the city and FUSD that actually covers a whole bunch of different pieces, um, but it's outdated and they've been working on fixing it for a while. Um, it hasn't gone back to council to get fixed, and I believe there are still um, areas where things get muddled in our relationship with them at this point, just in terms of how the process works. I don't believe they have to ask us. To do much with the school. Um, I am sure that we can offer to provide unification as a part of their future plans, but we can do a little more. I can do a little more looking into some of that and find out more. Um, Bryce Doty, I believe, was the one in real estate who was working on the IJ last week to find out for him where that's landed. I know his, his work plan with all the capital projects happening has been significant. I believe those staff changes at FUSD as well, so it might just kind of be on hold for the moment. But um, so I guess that's not a direct answer. Yeah. It is that we can 
Phillips brings up that whole project to us, many ideas. We kept funding, not we couldn't fund them for the way we could fund another um, type of project. Um, and so they, you know, have applied for BIA grants for pieces of it that are, you know, visible and have gotten started on things um, that, you know, that were out of the overall project amount because they were public at this point. You know, we could, we, we could do so, but I think their whole project would have to be. It was, it was a whole, there was a whole bunch of issues and I, I can't, I can't remember all these texts. I'm so sorry. I no, I know. I know it's it stalled, it, but it stalled. It was. Yeah. It got very complicated very fast. Right. <laughs> but these are such major neighborhood projects, and especially concerned even the Marshall Brown and Corn campaign. I'm especially concerned about Kinsey, which is really a, a low-income neighborhood, and I don't think we have much unification stuff going on there. So uh, yeah. We can certainly see if, if the if the IGA is moving and if there's a way to put something in there that allows us to fund easier and then have those communications, but I don't have an answer for you at the moment. I apologize. Right. So there's, you know, so that you take a lot of research by staff. So if you're going to request it as a new project, you know, just consider that it's going to be a lift um, and at the appropriate time um, for requesting. If you wish to do so, but help us identify you know, some of the parameters of the project so that we can do a proper research. Thank you. So when I hear you talk, uh, Jana, I still hear a little, a little I know that, that um, our department or the, the department for the city has um, grown into itself. Um, are you still seeing limitations? Because I, I still hear a sentence and hesitancy in your voice. I'll be presenting the work plan okay. for FY24 at our next meeting. Sure. And 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 so you'll see that we're beyond capacity again. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yes, I guess maybe I am putting together that play out and and um, and so I know something that you already can prioritize will get bumped. And um, so staff capacity. Right. But because staff isn't going to go over certain capacity, you know, so we're going to have to, you know, be a little bit strict about it. We have a lot of projects in there um, and a lot of good projects. In there. So, yeah, I will be presenting the FY24 plan to you. Um, work plan is all based on your last retreat. And, and so um, we'll go over it next time in June. Yes. So it is. It's a. Uh, is it, looking at the plan and, and thinking about the number of projects per person is pretty impressive. I'm excited for you guys to see that. Um, it also is is worth maybe throwing out there that it's not just the three staff you see at the table that are required to deliver a project. They do the, the yeoman's lifting, but it also has to make it through a purchasing and procurement group. It has to go through a legal group, and those groups are also uh, busy. Right now, and so so sometimes you just coordinating between the different sections can be uh, time consuming for our team. So it, you know it, it isn't necessarily just a, a, a swift and process for them to go step by step. Sometimes it's about putting something in and then the next project and going back and forth for them checking in. So I'll throw out there that uh, there's a lot of moving parts on these projects, and uh, hopefully when you get to see them, you'll understand sort of what we are still trying to make sure that. We don't burn out our amazing team. Now. So <laughs> thanks for letting me just toss that one up on the table too. But I think it's going to be amazing what gets accomplished. Yes. No, no pressure. No <laughs> <laughs> pressure comes from pressure. Yes. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I really appreciate that question, Sandra. Um, in light of you potentially not being here very much longer. I mean, we're going to miss a lot of uh, of that. So, like, if this could be maybe your legacy ask on your way out. Legacy <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> it's established. <laughs> uh, just to keep the new members. Here. <laughs> well, there's just. I mean, it is pretty amazing how many big projects there are happening yeah. in the city and. For those of us who think that beautification is really an important part of the city's character, it 
it's just right. It's it's really important that we are on that we're somehow involved in those conversations. And I am distressed. I'll just say to you that FUSD again is doing its own thing. It doesn't have any kind of outreach to us. So I don't, you know, I guess we have to make it national. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I think, and it may just be a matter of, you know, reminding them or reaching out to them, them saying, yeah. They might have forgot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the process isn't in place at this point. Sandra, how did you feel about the priority or the, the presentation today? Do you, do you see it as an evolution, like kind of like we're getting to where we're wanting to go as far as staff, the way they're wanting to do the budget? I think it makes good sense. Yeah, as long as, um, you know, I always want to make sure there's in a so like, and you, you know, we all do flexibility so that as things come up, that are, we weren't aware of, they weren't on anyone's radar, and now all of a sudden they're there. That we have, that there's a way to, to let them in. And I mean, I think it's, it's what you do is constant kind of negotiating with, with, us, with us and with your staff. I just think it's important that that negotiation is happening all the time. Yeah. At the same time that we've got a plan in place, right. but there's enough wiggle room. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. I look at this plan and I see a lot of the negotiations that we made in the past fall into this plan, um, which is good. I love that. That's awesome. Like, you know, it's just, it, in some ways, it was BPAC driven, but now that staff possesses it, it's staff driven. So from BPAC, we can give more ideas that are outside of the box to uh, <laughs> keep, this, keep this evolution going. Look at his face. <laughs> <laughs> the work plan is two spots are going to be saved for Commissioner Garcia's evolution. But I again, I think um, that you and I have been on long enough to have seen these uh, really, these really big projects. Come to fruition for you and Eliza. Your side on all this, and it's just I so exciting to see the Cook Minis fall actually there. And that's, <coughs> that's yes. really a legacy project of you and Eliza. And it's been three years since we started that. <laughs> And Jenna, when I see that document that you just put on the screen and like your, your ideas behind it, um, uh, like I feel like the BPAC was heard in a lot of ways over the past many, maybe even before you, but like the, the idea is still stuck with staff. I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I, I consider the work plan, you know, evolving. Except for, I mean, the FY24 work plan, it all changes because of actual project demands or you know as a project can stop the city you know they can stop the project it, it can get delayed or there can be you know something um you know happens that you know suddenly emerges and you know there's a strong or by either staff of the city you know to address something or maybe yes we know that that happens that's organic but i think you know there'll be projects in our five-year plan out five years that by the time we get to them, we may say you know this is really not the highest priority anymore and these other projects new project ideas that we have coming forth they're a higher priority now and we might say hey we're, gonna, we're not going to do that one we're going to do these new ideas instead and i think that those where we can have a lot of fun and play with that they're going to be and that's what we think i'm going to make work harder <laughs> Can I point out the one interesting? So I, I appreciate you saying that about what you've heard about how the, it's been incorporated and, and the commission got heard. Because 
I think during the transition from the way the program was structured previously to to the growth of the of the program and to the transition from when Carl and Mark were here and, and, and they had their direction from the commission from the council and we worked with them. It we really, really have tried to shift to meet what the commission was was hoping for while staying within our ordinance and all the other requirements, of course. Um, but when you think of it, there's a walkthrough for project tomorrow that was something Mark Delucido designed five years ago, six years ago, and it's complete now. But when you think about that, like, like these projects, the, the, the lines can be long, um, and often are. And so it is a continuing shift of making sure that, that those projects still need to get finished. The new ones have to get in place, but you know, design takes time, procurement takes time, construction takes time, closeout takes time, and uh, and all that time, your imaginations are moving. Um, so it is, it is exciting that we have the capacity to be able to do sort of that piece, but I really do appreciate hearing what you said about, we have tried to, to figure out how to be um, more communicative and more open and more able to, to evolve and function. Uh, at the same time, like I said, there's a project, literally the walkthroughs tomorrow for those three Route 66 monuments. Those were designed before Eliza got here and she's gone. You know, yeah. it, it is amazing <laughs> sometimes how these how these projects move forward and, yeah, and what it takes to get yeah, across the projects. Getting them done in a year is a miracle and then generally three to yeah. five years. That is just the nature of the beast. Yeah. You know, it, and it just is. And that that's a long time because like you said, lots of new ideas. Oh, but no, we're not done with that yet. <laughs> so I just want to throw that on the table, and I, I do appreciate you recognizing that some of this is because actually direct conversations with you over coffee, with other commissioners, hearing what the commission wanted, and, and then us trying to figure out how to respond to that. And so I appreciate your leadership and all of your leadership. One of the things, too, I just want to say is I think it's really um, important to um, and and for the two, like when I to have this two le two levels of things going on. So there are these big capital projects, and there's this the, the transportation management. Right, the, the BIA so grants important. and the traffic signal cabinets. As I said at the retreat last year, they do a lot of work. They get a lot of work out to the public. That's very visible. That then helps build all our support for all of our big projects. And that's why, you know, we are continuing the traffic signal cabinets. That's why we are really trying to increase the money from the BIA. Because they do that thing. They do that thing in it's a number of projects quickly. These can be done in a year. And they're not the three to five year projects. And they do a lot of work for us. And I, I think we talked about that at the last retreat about how much we Really need to rely on the, the number of projects out. Can I also mention the, the flowers, for instance, oh, right? Okay. First year that was a huge lift. Second year that was a very, very, very large lift. It is getting a little, a little better, but it still takes a ton of work. And but now it's not as new, right? So people don't think of it as a new project, but there's still a lot of work that goes into making sure we figure out how to get all that done to replace the things that go on. Those types of ongoing projects. Are, are pretty significant and, and can be pretty massive in terms of, of benefit and also in terms of that continued staff time. Like those types of, of projects are, are pretty strong, but we're trying to you know expand those each year. Um, and also, you know, one thing that, that, that doesn't come up as a project, um, but I'm very excited about is, you know, part of Kristen's job is, is to actually bring us into this world of uh, having a collection and collections management which isn't a new project, but we, we don't have a comprehensive list. Or pr promotion. Or promotion or, or digital art. archive of the art that we've produced. And that's gonna be an amazing thing to create too. Is it a new art project? No, but is it the way we should have been treating all our projects all this way through? Did I know that? Nope, that's Jana coming in and being like, you guys don't have something you need. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, we should fix that. Right. So, yeah. you know, these are these are the other kinds of projects that are kind of in the background. Too, right. you know, and, so. and Kristen's position is actually 50% dedicated to that. She, does, she only does 50% of the projects. So, remember, that came to her as well. So, as soon as you get that done, then. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
I'm lying. No, this is not consistent. <laughs> Two years. <laughs> I just thought those were some like, toss on the table. <laughs> no pressure. You're having done a six foot picture. All right. Sure. Are we, are we ready to move forward? There we go. Okay. Yes. Two from items are next. None. Um, I don't have any two from items. Our liaison left the room. <laughs> I know she's still here. here. I don't have any. Is she still there? I am here. I am getting oh. ready. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have any two from items? Not tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Any other two from items from the commission? The conversation about the minutes, is that at the end of the meeting or uh, two from for next meeting? It's it's coming up next. Okay. Request for future agenda items. Yeah, so. So here it is, Chris. Do you want to introduce your Do you want to introduce your point and your um, request? Yes, I think when minutes are taken, if it's not unanimous, how people vote should be reflected in the minutes. And so, staff, does that does that need to? I, I would like to at least have a conversation about it. Um, I don't know if, in terms of practice if that requires anything formal. We're requesting it as a future discussion item, correct? Commissioner sure. Bill? Okay, yeah. so I'll support that. Do we have somebody else support that discussion item? Uh, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Great. Thank you for bringing that up, Chris. Um, and for the additional support, Anthony will include that as a discussion item on a on our June meeting. Is that probably I can. Because it's not a major one, we can probably do it in June, but I have to I have to just look at the agendas for each. Great. I have another request. Please. And it's a topic that we brought up before. I just don't know if it's needed as a future agenda. I remain concerned about the removal of the different tasks and I'd like to have a conversation about what the commission can do to be support. Right. It is it is a it is a discussion item that I have on my list of future discussion items, but the city wasn't quite ready to get that we needed some staff people and it wasn't a good time in the recent months. Right. I think we can well we can talk about a little bit away from some things well since then. We'd actually have an request come in so that you guys could ask questions about what commissions are able to do. The clerk was going to come in. Uh, I don't think we have that schedule yet. Um, we also have been sort of rebranding the BBB and we're about to launch the new logo as something that's kind of a preparation for um, highlighting the benefits. We want to make sure that when stuff is funded by BBB, it is very, very, very clear. And that um, hasn't always been the case. So we do have a new logo that's about to get rolled out. I literally hope be in the next week or two. Um, I know actually a conversation about that. Um, yes, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> there is things moving. Um, and yes, uh, we have a schedule that will be shot. Right, right. It about. has not been lost. It is on my list and it just it, it's been waiting to be right. <laughs> okay, great, thank you. But we are also very aware of that her writing. When's it up again? Well, I think we got it. 28. We want to try to get on the election for 24 and 26 in case we don't like these good ones, but we want to back up. You never know what the economy is going to be doing at the time or what other things might have hit voter confidence. So yeah, so you don't need a second because it's already it, it, it's already we already voted on that and and um, I already have it on my list. Thank you. So any other agenda items for future meetings? Hearing none, I'll adjourn the meeting at five twenty-five.
thank everybody for coming. Happy birthday again, Fred. What happened to your agenda item of, uh, of the meeting location? Uh, I think that they're working on it for later down the road. Yeah, I can't. Let me 